interesting fight at Bantamweight as we have Vancouver, Washington's own Ricky Simone, who was originally scheduled to be taking on Boom Brian Kelleher, now going in to face El Tigre, Gaetano Perello, out of Belgium. And I have it up on the screen, Italy, uh, or Belgium by way of Italy. But this dude is a striker. And I know a lot of people are going to draw on the fact that he fought Arnold Allen six years ago or over six years ago and he lost that one by decision. But if you go through and watch his fights, very, very aggressive fighter, very quick to close distance. He loves the tie clinch. He loves to throw knees up the middle. He throws a lot of power strikes. His cardio is half decent. His grappling's not that great. But overall, he's a very exciting fighter. And a little bit surprised that this is who they tapped to be the short notice replacement because he hasn't fought in a little over a year. Somewhat similar to Francisco Figueredo that we also have on this card. And for Gaetano Perello, again, you just have to really speak to the, the striking roots. He's a K1 champ in Europe. He's trained with some of the best in the business. I know in one of his uh, recent fights, and there's a lot of tape on Gaetano Perello, so you can't be lazy on this one, but he had Tom Duquenois in his corner. Tom, the fire, fire kid. kid, where are you at? Modeling. Tom Duquenois. But <laughs> overall, going back and watching a lot of Gaetano Perello fights, it's really exciting to watch him fight. Uh, he, he always brings it fight of the night type style if he gets matched up with a striker. I mean, you look at his last loss against Josiro Boye. I know Boye in his last fight ended up fighting Kurt Holoba on that card that they had down in Georgia there this past year. Kind of crazy. He lost that fight. He was on a heater, and that was a rematch because Perello had won the first fight. Boye goes in there, and, you know, it's not the most competitive fight at the start. Perello's pouring it on him. Boye gets it to the ground, and Perello can't really get back up to his feet. And then if you watch the second round, Perello really tries to pour it on again, and Boye lands a couple of good shots, lands a knee, and really stuns him. He lands some left hooks, stuns Perello, and then finishes him. So Pirello can get finished. Now, I know that's the only knockout loss that he has in his career, and it was over two and a half years ago, so I wouldn't put a ton of stock into it. But he lost to that striker there, and there's questions in the grappling. Now you're taking on Ricky Simone in your UFC debut. This is a tricky one. Yeah, so let's just go over how you hyped Pirello. He'd get into a fight of the night style if he's matched up with, what was that? A striker. Wait, it's got to be a striker. Give me the Hulk Hogan. Oh, it's yeah, got to yeah. be a striker. So they're matching him up with Ricky Simone. And Ricky Simone for me is like Kelly Olenek. You're like, wow, in college, he's averaging, what, 23 and 12? I like Gonzaga. him the Celtics. He's for, good. But he wasn't, though. That's the thing. Like, he was really good, and I expected a lot of things from him. He just never really realized his full potential. And yes, Kelly Olenek, Canadian. Yeah. But he's always someone who I had higher expectations for and they just never really seem to meet them. And Ricky Simone is starting to fall into that category for me because, okay, think about before Uriah Faber, pre-Faber Ricky Simone. He beats Mirabdi Valshvili, who they had had a fairly competitive fight and then, of course, there's the whole weird stoppage of did he win by guillotine, did he not win by guillotine? But take the controversial finish out of that fight. It was still a good performance for Simone. So, okay, you can have a competitive fight with Mirab, who for the most part has just run everyone over in the UFC. And then you go out and you fight Craig's low-key maybe favorite fighter of all time, Honey Yaya. Honey, where you at? He defends all of his takedown attempts. He beats him up on the feet. And really, Ricky Simone looked like he was ready to go on a big run at 135. And this was the time where Cody Garbrandt was still kind of in the mix. As, uh, he wasn't the champ anymore, but he was still in the division. Really, 135 is just a great division. And the fact that Ricky Simone was starting to get his name into the category of he can fight those top-level guys. It was an exciting time. And then we get a really weird UFC card with two really weird stoppages at the top of it. We get Tremaine Durandamy knocks out Aspen Ladd in about 13 seconds with one weird punch. Maybe she was out, maybe she wasn't. And Uriah Faber knocked out Ricky Simone in under a minute in the co-main event of that. And it was a fight where at first I was like, okay, anyone can lose fast. It's not that big of a deal. I'd almost rather you get knocked out in under a minute than you just get dominated for 15 of them. And then we kind of see Ricky Simone never regain the, I'll say confidence that he had pre uriah Faber fight because you look at his loss to Rob Font. And against Rob Font, he goes out there, he tries to strike with Rob Font for a little bit. 
not a great idea, as we've seen from really all of Rob Font's career. So Rob Font starts out striking him, and then he can never get his wrestling game going. And that's a big problem for Ricky Simone. He is very Frankie Edgar with his striking, where he can have success with his striking, but he needs the wrestling to be able to open up the success from his hands. He needs his opponent to always be thinking about like, oh damn, am I going to be defending a takedown, or am I going to be defending punches? And his last fight against Ray Borg, listen, I thought Ricky Simone was going to dominate Ray Borg. He's bigger, and they both do pretty much the same stuff. He got outstruck by Ray Borg, and it's a weird thing to just say out loud. Ray Borg was able to get on the inside constantly and just land in volume to where Ricky Simone, if you have long arms, you get to a point where, okay, you can either throw elbows when they're close or you can throw punches when they're far away. Ray Borg was able to keep it at a very awkward range for Ricky Simone, and Simone was just never able to get his striking going. Luckily, he won't have that problem in this fight. It just does concern me that if Simone can't start getting takedowns at a certain point, he's going to be exposed a little bit as a striker, but... And like you would kind of mention, it's not like Pirello's got a great defensive grappling uh, skill set. So if Simone is able to go out there, really wear on Pirello with his wrestling game plan. I just see it. Ha- or I just see him having more success as the fight progresses. Ricky Simone, to me, if we're gonna pick on Gonzaga, is like my Adam Morrison. You expected so much out of him in college. You get to Charlotte, you fall off the map. But Ricky Simone can still win a championship with the Lakers. So we'll see what happens. But it's just been a weird bag. I mean, the guy's a former champ from LFA. Comes in with a lot of hype in the UFC. Montel Jackson's the fight. And then he comes in and you talked about it. You beat Jackson. You beat Yaya. And then you lose to Faber. And where are we at now? So it's very difficult. With Gaetano Pirello, again... I like him in a striking bout with just about anybody. I mean, the guy is explosive, but you look at the last two fighters. Percy Herrera was not in a league whatsoever compared to Ricky Simone. And I get it. Percy Herrera is a striker. He was 6-4 going into that one. He was rail thin and just didn't look ready in that one. And then in the Enzo Maria Ezzi fight, he was 7-5. That was uh, Pirello's last fight. He landed one liver shot, and then from that point on, the commentators went on to say, well, he doesn't even look like he wants to be in there. He looked hurt, but he wasn't accepting damage. He wasn't even accepting kicks, and then Pirello goes in, throws a knee, and drops him, and the fight's over. Gaetano Pirello is one of those guys, like, he's still only 28 years old as well. Both these guys 28, but I feel like kind of the the times maybe passed. I mean, unless he puts on... If he puts on a statement fight in this one, holy smokes, Gaetano Pirello, uh, you know, everybody in Belgium should be excited, but Italian MMA has been in a weird spot. I mean, you got Danilo Belardo, Alessio Di Chirico, but you've got uh, Marvin Vittori way up here. So for Gaetano Pirello, he can really kind of capitalize on that. I know Al Zelino would like that over on Twitter. But if we have a look at the topology picks, it's still early. 209 of them. 94% have Ricky Simone. Stockton. In terms of the odds in this one, Ricky Simone went from a minus 285 at open to minus 333. Gaetano Pirello went from a plus 225 to a plus 262. Again, I like Gaetano Pirello as a fighter. I enjoy watching his fights. If he wins this one, I have no idea who you match him up with I'm going sure forward in this division. I just don't see him... Like, the question I have to ask, is he as good as Brian Kelleher? No. I don't think so. I thought Brian Kelleher would have had a competitive and good fight with Ricky Simone, but I think Ricky Simone with the wrestling in this one. Again, Ray Borg, yeah, I didn't love that fight. Uh, You know, it was closer than it should have been if you're a big Ricky Simone fan, but hopefully my Adam Morrison uh, comparison hits, and hopefully we win a title with the Lakers here tonight. I mean, he could just stuck with the Miami Heat. Maybe this is the contract Ricky Simone signs, and he's going to be with the Heat until the finals, like Olenek. I I think he will get the win. Adonis Haslam. Yeah, but Haslam's been around for a long time. Just stop with the basketball references. (laughs) Ricky Simone should win this fight. Again, his strengths really play into the weaknesses of Pirello, and if Pirello can defend some takedowns, start to damage Simone as the fight progresses, we might get a competitive fight, but I do see the wrestling and just the overall grappling of Ricky Simone winning out on this. Matt, really looking forward to this fight. We have Ricky Simone getting the win over Gaetano Pirello, and overall, a great card. Your co-main event low-key fire i know a lot of people are going to get excited about that the closer we get to it warley alvis taking on munir lezez and in our main event we have neil magny taking on michael chiesos keep it locked in with fight night picks man as we always say let's Let's get get into it. it